How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome to another Dynamic Projectiles video. In this video we're going to be making bullet shells and this is something that I've wanted to do for a while. It's a really cool effect to add to our weapons. So to do this effect we're going to double click and make a new sprite. We're going to resize this to be three pixels by three pixels and so it's really small. We're going to take our pencil tool and I'm going to right click because black is my secondary color and so by right clicking I can use that to outline and left click to fill in my bullet color. Make this a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit less bright. And this is going to be my bullet shell. Now you can make different bullet shells for different weapons, but since the machine gun and the pistol have a yellow bullet type, this is going to be the shell that I want to be fired. So our bullet shell is our empty shell. Once the bullet's fired, it's going to make this, it's gonna kind of go wherever it wants to go because that's how it would work in real life. So let's call this object shells and let's add two behaviors to it. Let's go add a fade behavior and let's add a physics behavior as well. Now the physics behavior is the important one because what it's going to do is it's going to make it go up and to the left or behind the player and then it's gonna make it fall. So let's look at that. Let's look at our properties here. There's not much that we need to change here. Our fade, we might wanna let it, we might wanna sync this up with our time when we spawn it. So we'll come back to that. But for our physics, the only thing that might want to change a little bit is our elasticity or our bounciness. So when it comes down to the ground or when it hits our collision, how is it going to bounce? And 0.2 might not be enough. So let's put it to like 0. Point, let's put it to like 0. 0.5. Let's try putting it there. And we'll see how it does at that. So let's hit save and let's actually go to our player event because now we need a way to actually call this bullet shell. So to do this, let's go all the way to the bottom and let's make a new function. Let's go function on function. Let's call this spawn shells. And in it, what we're going to do is we're going to have our weapon spawn the shell. So let's go spawn another object. And in this case, it's going to be our shells. And the image point is gonna be straight from the bullet. That's why we're spawning it from our weapon. Now we need to actually check to see which way our player is facing. So if we are facing to the left, it can throw our bullet shells backwards and same thing for the right. So to do this, we're gonna make a new sub event by hitting B and we're gonna double click and go to our player. We're gonna type in mirrored and then we're gonna copy and paste this and we're gonna right click and invert the second one. So if it is mirrored, what's going to happen? We're gonna add the action for our shells to actually set the velocity of our physics object. So we're gonna to go to our forces, set the velocity. And now this is where it's going to be a little bit more random. So what we're going to do is we're gonna type in a choose. And now you could make this a random function and pick numbers for it to be, but I'd rather have a little bit more control over it. And what we're going to do since it's not, or since it is mirrored, what we're going to do is we're gonna put it as a positive value. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, that should be good. And for our Y, we can leave it alone. It doesn't have to choose, although we might as well make it choose. So what we're going to do is we're gonna put this to negative value. This needs to be a negative value for both of them so it goes behind our player. So we're gonna say negative 100, negative 110, negative 120, negative 130, and you can keep going so on and so forth, however long you like, and negative 150. And let's hit OK. And did I forget a comma there? I did. I put the negative sign in the incorrect spot. Now I'm going to hold down Control. And I'm going to put it for not mirrored. Now the only thing that needs to change here is our positive values need to become negative for not mirrored. And once we're done with that, when we hit OK, we're done with our spawn shells function. So let's go to our pistol and our machine gun, the two that are going to actually have bullet shells. Let's go to our function. Let's call the function spawn shells. And let's call it for our machine gun as well. And let's see how it looks. Oh, you know what? Okay, hold on. So there we go. Cool. They're totally firing the way we want them to. And they're doing it all in random patterns. But they're not actually landing on our collisions. So let's go all the way back down. And let's double click. And let's say if our shells is overlapping another object, in this case our collision, then let's add the action for our shells to actually stop 
with the physics, turn the physics off altogether. And to do that, we're gonna go into our object settings under our physics, and we're gonna say set immovable to immovable. So now we cannot move them. So when it collides, there we go, it's gonna land. Now our fade out is playing after, I believe it was one second. So let's go to our shells object again, and I can kind of just quickly grab it over here, and I can go to my fade, fade out time. It's a little bit too quick, so let's try putting it at two and see how that works. And if I hit save and play, it takes a little bit longer to fade out when it hits the ground. So if I keep going, if I put, to, put this to three or four, let's try four. And if I keep going like that, you can see that now it's gonna slowly fade out and that's a much cooler effect. Now, I wanna show you one more thing before I show you the machine gun, because I know the machine gun has a faster weapon rate, so it's gonna spawn this a lot quicker and it's gonna look a lot cooler. But what we could even do to make it further, or just to further play these shells, we can hit B on our pistol and we can double click and say every X seconds and we can make this random. We could do choose between 1.0 comma 3.0. So every one or every three seconds, then we can put that event there so or our function call. So now when we have a pistol, it's not always going to spawn the shells, which might be something that you want to have. There it goes. And there it goes. So it's going to be a little bit more random. Now what I want to show you is when we have our machine gun, what happens with this? It's kind of a crazy effect. And these are the kind of effects that you might be after when it comes to making an action-oriented game. And let me, let me not talk so much when the audio is playing. But that is going to be our bullet shells. I think it's a really cool effect. And you can even get more control over this by adding different images. So you could add another frame for this. You could duplicate this. And you could call this one for our laser. We could have that color green for our laser and you can have laser shells, which makes absolutely no sense, but you could do that if you wanted to. And then every single time, just like we did with our muzzle flash, you can set the, uh, instead of setting the animation, you can set the animation frame to two or three or four. So that's how we make our bullet shells. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'm Jeremy Alexander. Leave a like if you did enjoy this video and comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for some other videos that I should be making. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.